Ready to update what's in your driveway? Tired of paying high payments or interest rates? Replace them this month at Greenville Toyota's Pick a Pair event. For just $3.99 a month, you get two new Toyotas for one low price. Choose a new Corolla Camry or Prius C for your first vehicle. Then choose from a new Camry Hybrid, RAV4, or Prius for your second. It's that easy. $3.99 a month for two new Toyotas. Plus, get the Greenville Toyota Advantage. Pick a pair this month only at Greenville Toyota, where if you give us just 15 minutes, we can lower your car payment. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy & Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case, and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. Where were you? It was about 4.30. I'd come home early for our anniversary. Then the call came. It was the doctor with my results. The last thing I remember is hearing those three words, you're cancer free. All across Eastern North Carolina, Vident Health Cancer Care Specialists and Navigators offer a team approach to detecting, treating, and beating the disease. Call Vident Health for Cancer Care. Uptown Greenville is the voice of the downtown. We exist to promote quality, cultural, residential, and economic development. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. It's alive. Safe. It's awesome. A great place to work. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. Student at East Carolina University. Co-founder of eaudit.com. Sergeant with the Center City Unit. Owner of the Varsity Club. Our downtown has a name, and it's Uptown. Nice. I'm good like that. <laughs> Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Hey, it's Riverboat Ron on the Pepsi can. You need a cool nickname like Riverboat Ron. I do? Yeah. The Lukner Eclipse. Yeah. Yeah. Fine 59. Oh. Kitty Cat. Huh? You know, like Kitty Cat. Those are terrible. The new Pepsi 18 pack featuring limited edition Carolina Panthers collector cans. Grab one for game day. Pepsi, official soft drink of the Panthers and all for the Carolinas. The Lukness Monster. Yeah. No. Bummer. Hey, it's Riverboat Ron on a Pepsi can. You need a cool nickname like Riverboat Ron. I do? Yeah. The Lukner Eclipse. Yeah. Fine 59. Oh. Kitty Cat. Huh? You know, like Kitty Cat. Those are terrible. Oh. The new Pepsi 18 pack featuring limited edition Carolina Panthers collector cans. Grab one for game day. Pepsi, official soft drink of the Panthers and all for the Carolinas. The Luke Seven and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Okay, welcome back. It's Talk of the Town. I took a break. I went out into the coffee room. I mopped up all the coffee. By the way, Michael, two things. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Michael, thank you. We now have the Menji's coffee back, don't we? I can tell this is the Menji's coffee. This, yes. cost the Menji's this coffee. coffee is good. Very good. It doesn't taste like the Starbucks mess that we've had in there. Yeah. We finally got the Menji's coffee back. Menji's Select. It's good stuff. Menji's Select coffee, which we get from the Pepsi guys. Only in the gold bag. And it's really the best coffee around. I'm telling you, this is the best coffee for your office right here. Number one. Number two. Why was it all over the counter? Chase and I just uh, spent five minutes cleaning up the kitchen because it was coffee everywhere. Spilled all over the... Why, why did that happen? That I don't know. That wasn't you? I don't think that was me. I don't, blame it I don't on the country uh, I just station, make guys? It, I don't drink it. Make it. Blame it on the guys down the hall from the country a station? Absolutely. Yep. That's what I do. Those country music guys, they spill coffee everywhere. I don't care. 
McGee is here. Good morning, McGee. Morning, Hen. Billy Weaver is here. I walked in from the uh, coffee spill, and you guys were in here talking football. And I forgot <laughs> football season was happening. We had, yeah, yeah. This, Wait a minute. I've been involved in the silly season, yeah. the political season. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were talking about what happened to Temple this weekend, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, not fun to watch at all. Were you not there? fun to watch. No, I wasn't, no. Well, you made a good decision. There. Um, <laughs> I would have been there. It was, and I think we talked about this before. My, it was my daughter's uh, 16th birthday party on Saturday, so I stayed in Eastern North Carolina right. for that. It was a pretty big event. Yeah. Had it not been for that, I would have made the, the trip up to Philly. Yeah, I think you made the right call to stay around. Yeah, um, it was almost. It was probably as cold and rainy here for her party <laughs> as it yeah. was in yeah. Temple. I kept talking to my wife, and she was like, uh, "I'm like, we were frozen and wet." Uh, I just got wet getting in and out of the stadium because we had a suite, which was great. But I was I was hmm. texting her, and she was like, nice and toasty here. <laughs> Game's on TV. Got a better seat than you. And I'm dry. <laughs> I didn't appreciate that. We've been talking about uh, Tom Tillis' big win last night, all of the um, change in the direction of the country this morning as you wake up. The Harry Reid era is over in Washington, D.C., and I suspect so is the Barack Obama era. Um, one thing about it, he won't get any of his policies through at this point. Someone was complaining that the Republicans would probably go out and try to impeach him now and all that. Somebody was. They're not going to do that. Why bother with trying to impeach him? I'd be very disappointed if they spent their time on that. Let's yeah. pass some legislation, for crying out loud. Let's pass all this... Stuff that's been sitting on Harry Reid's desk for two years. What are your thoughts this morning? 561-8255. 561-TALK. Is it Joe Allen or Joe Ellen? Joe Allen. You're Joe on. Allen. Good morning. Is it Joe Allen? Yes, sir. Joe Allen, how are you? I'm doing good. How you doing, uh, Mr. Henry? Where are you, where are you calling from, Joe Allen? I'm calling from Lewiston, North Carolina. Lewiston, up in Bertie County. Good to hear from you. How yes, are you? Sir. Yes, sir. Good to hear from you. Yeah. I was watching the election last night, and I wasn't really surprised that Tom Tillis won because of one fact that Obama uh, won North Carolina in 2012. And I know the polls were predicting, you know. Well, wait, let, me, let, me, let me stop you. Obama did not win North Carolina in 2012. Romney. I mean, excuse me, Romney. Right, yeah, right, right, yeah, right. right. But, you know, Romney, there was something, and I knew that Tom Tillis was going to win. I, I was a little apprehensive, but I felt like he was going to win because of that fact. And I know the polls were predicting, you know, a little different, but I felt that way. I said, I knew he was going to win. I wasn't a whole lot surprised. You know? I didn't want to count the eggs when they hatched, but I, yeah. was, I wasn't, you know, really surprised. But I'm were, glad you, were, you, were you supporting Tillis or Hagan? I was supporting Tillis. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, you mentioned polls, Joe Allen, and um, how about public policy polling? Can will will anybody will anybody now believe what I've been saying about public policy polling? They come out at last week and show that Kay Hagan is winning by three points. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that was about propping her up and trying to help her raise money. I really do. Yeah, I think so. You know, that's how Rush Limbaugh say, you know, those polls are not reflecting public opinion. They ought to skew public opinion. <laughs> well, public policy polling, in my opinion, has no credibility. And, nah, I, I I, you, know, you know, it's interesting, that Harper poll that came out, remember yesterday uh, morning yep. we talked about that? Yep. It was uh -huh. dead It was dead on. It said that Tillis would win by two points. Yeah. Now, I yes. didn't think Tillis would win by two points. I thought he had a chance to win, but I thought it was going to be probably by a point or less. Yes, well, I'm But I'm anyway. Sure. All right, Joe Allen, thank, thank you for that call. Nice to hear from you. 561-8255, 561-TALK. Dave, you're on Talk of the Town. Good morning. Good morning, Big Ian. How are you? Uh, last night was a, was a great night. Um, yesterday, on Tom and Sadie... Travis was talking about how easy it was for him. Did we to lose vote. you? Hello. We got yeah, I, we, we got you, Dave. Go ahead. Okay. Yesterday on Tom and Sadie, Travis was talking about how easy it was for him to vote compared to his grandmother's time. 
you know, he, he didn't go back to his mother's time. Yeah. He went all the way back to his grandmama's time. Mm. And Le- and Leon, isn't, isn't all Leon saying is just individual responsibility? Isn't that all he's pushing? Well, he's all, Leon's always been on that kick, and I you know, couldn't agree with him more. Right, me too. So, so, so what more do the Republicans do? I mean, that's why we're pushing individual responsibility. I mean, I'm for Rand Paul. Yeah, but you know, you, you, the, I think what Rand Paul is saying is that we have to actually reach out to the uh, uh, non-white communities and get our story across a little better. Well, you know, yes, they have to go out and tell the Detroit story, you know? Right. I mean, why, why, why do black people in Detroit keep voting for Democrats up there? Anybody ever thought that through? That place, you know, I, it's interesting. Um, Jay Ward, who is uh, the actor from here in Greenville. Remember last right. year uh, we had him on. He was shooting a TV yep. show up there right. in, uh, in Detroit. And I remember right. I, it, something he said. He said, he said, I'm staying in a nice hotel in Detroit while we're shooting the TV show. What was the name of that show? It was on the a, uh, AMC. I'll find it really quick. You with um, can't remember the name of it. Uh, but uh, he was a regular on that show. And, and he said, I'm staying in Detroit, but we're shooting in areas of Detroit. And it looks like a third world country. I remember mm-hmm. that uh, oh, yeah. vividly. I heard that. I yeah. remember that. And, okay, and, and well. so, but, you know, but, 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 but Democrats keep voting for Democrats up there in Detroit. I mean, what's the deal? Why, you know, do, do they think that somehow the, the magic is going to occur if they keep doing the same stuff over and over again and that place is going to get out of the dumper? It's not. Right. Okay, Big Ben. Yeah. All right. Fun. Thank you, man. 561-8255. 561-TALK. Nikki, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, Andy. I, I, Mick, I is it, is it Mickey? Well. I'm sorry, Mickey. Yeah, Mickey. Yeah, I know you're doing well as, as I am. I'm very excited. Hope to see some real change. But uh, the reason I was calling this morning um, um, is uh, have you, anybody thought, you know, I was kind of worried about the Libertarian taking some of the uh, votes away from Tom Tillis. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I think he got about, okay. uh, Sean Ha got about uh, three points. Three, Three percent. Yeah, three percent. Three percent of the vote, uh, which was, you know, it's crazy. Well, I, I found something out this morning because um, you know my sister, who is a hardcore liberal, she her, her husband and, and a lot of their family are are just uh, hardcore liberal. But when I talked to her this morning, she told me that she could not vote for Kay Hagen, so she voted for the Libertarian. So I, I was just thinking, I wonder how many Democrats actually voted for the Libertarian because they couldn't bring themselves to vote for him. You know what, I, th- I think I think there was a bunch of people that voted for him just because he was for legalization of marijuana, and that's their only issue. And, yeah. you know, and, if, and you know what, if that's your only issue and that's all you care about with your country, shame on you. Yeah, but, well, I uh, agree, I agree. I just was thinking that some of the some maybe some of the hardcore liberals just couldn't bring themselves to vote for. You know, it's funny. I was hey, listening. Hey. To, I was listening to Jonathan Feltz last night on uh, the radio coverage here on the station from Raleigh, and Feltz made the comment last night that you know that the Democrats had really tried to prop up Sean Hall and make him look like a legitimate cam- uh, candidate. I mean, the guys that the the, the, the guys uh, about uh, two points away from being a legitimate idiot. I mean, he's a pizza delivery he's a, guy. He's a 55 year old loser from Durham who delivers pizzas. Nothing wrong with li- delivering pizzas. Right, right. But I mean, let, let's let's analyze why he's delivering pizzas at age 55. Because he is a pothead. Yeah. He's oh, a 55 year old stoner. I, he was. He was. I was really concerned because I saw he had 76 to 80 thousand votes, and I was sitting there thinking, well, who? Who would vote for him? And then, you know, then when I, like I said, when I talked to my sister, she, she could not. She she votes. She won't miss the election, but she could not bring herself to vote for Kay Hagan. Yeah. And, uh, and she Crazy. voted all. She voted hardcore. You know, Obama, everything. And I, because I, 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 I'm disappointed in her. <laughs> yeah. But I said, you know, maybe there are some more Democrats, like you said, tried to prop him up and. Try to cut the vote down. Maybe they just couldn't bring themselves to um, to vote for Kay Hagan because yeah. I was concerned to start with last night, but yeah. it got better as I grew up. But I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. I was just wondering. 
All right, thank All you, right. man. Appreciate it. All right. Five six one eight two five five. If you want to get in, uh, I, you know, it, I had a couple of Tom Lampert just. Walked. Did you want to get on? Did you just stop by to get on? Tom Lampert couldn't sleep last night. He was up so empty. We'll get you on in a second, but the um, the we'll, we'll get we'll get Billy the news, and then we'll stick stick you over there for a minute. Uh, I, I got a lot of phone calls and texts yesterday from different people. I got a here's an interesting uh, scenario. Let me ask you guys if you um, if you experience this. Up in Elizabeth City yesterday, uh, one of our listeners was voting, and he uh, he sent me this note yesterday afternoon that he took his cell phone into the booth with him because he had the people that he wanted to vote for, particularly the judges and things like that, on his cell phone. Can't have them. And he was told he couldn't have a cell phone in there. And he was saying, you know, can you get them to change? You know, would you would you advocate to get the General Assembly to change that law? I actually had the uh, conservative judges on my phone i took my phone into the booth and i used it and no one said anything i did too but i i, I didn't pull it out i mean I, of course i had my phone with me and i wasn't asked if i had a phone but there was a big sign on, at my precinct mm -hmm. on the door that said no cell phones are allowed yeah oh really yep you know i, I maybe i missed the sign it could yeah, have been mo one of most of them do uh, I didn't realize you couldn't take your phone i guess the reason for that is that you can't uh, they don't want you to call somebody and ask them but what's wrong with that? What if you want to call somebody and ask them? I guess once you get into the, I mean, it'd be, it'd kind of be like, uh, you know, having your your spouse go in with you. Yeah, they won't let your spouse go in there with you either, will they? If you ask, the, if you if you ask, ask they will ask, let you do you that. Say you, I need some help. So, so I mean, you know, uh, on Regis's uh, Millionaire Show, you can phone a friend, but you can't when you're in the voting booth. I mean, what's the? <laughs> you know, something I found interesting too was that, and I guess I hit it just the right time. There just happened to be two people behind me as I was at my booth voting that came up, were signing in, and uh, the lady said, uh, you don't have to have an ID this time around, but you will, of course, for 2016. Right. Neither one knew. I thought it was kind of interesting that people still aren't aware of the fact that the voter ID law, you know. Well, it goes in next it goes in the I next mean, election. I mean, yeah, next election. In the next election. And, right. and, and she, she said, the first lady said, oh, I had no idea. And the second lady said, I, just, I don't have an ID. Well, I don't know if you, at your voter precincts, if there was a sign outside, most of them that said you do not have to have an ID to vote. Um, so that just kind of puts it out there. Well, you know, the lady that, the lady that registered, that. when I gave, went in and gave my address, the lady actually said to me, you know that you don't have to have a voter, uh, you don't yeah. have to have an ID this election, but right. you will have to in 2016. Thing, and right. I think that's what the signs were out there for, to let yeah. people know, to right. kind of get them aware of, of starting to get into that mode of thinking. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. WITN News Headlines. Billy will update us on some of the election results last night. Tom will stop in for a second. We got a guest coming in as well. McGee will have sport. Did we ever do sports last time? No, we didn't. We blew your sports. Well, no, we mentioned we Eugene. Talked about it. We didn't enough. You didn't even uh, mention Bill, to me. Bill and I shared a sports I'm blaming day you day because day. I. You hey, know, you're you're driving this bus. I'm in. sleeping. I'm, sleeping a, I'm at asleep the wheel. right now. Sleep I'm not the awake. Wheel. We'll be right back. Tired of paying high payments or interest rates? Replace them this month at Greenville Toyota's Pick a Pair event. For just $3.99 a month, you get two new Toyotas for one low price. Choose a new Corolla Camry or Prius C for your first vehicle. Then choose from a new Camry Hybrid, RAV4, or Prius for your second. It's that easy. $3.99 a month for two new Toyotas. Plus, get the Greenville Toyota Advantage. Pick a pair this month only at Greenville Toyota, where if you give us just 15 minutes, we can lower your car payment. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy and Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case, and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. Where were you? It was about 4.30. I'd come home early for our anniversary. Then the call came. It was the doctor with my results. The last thing I remember is hearing those three words, you're cancer free. All across Eastern North Carolina, Vident Health Cancer Care Specialists and Navigators offer a team approach to detecting, treating, and beating the disease. Call Vident Health for Cancer Care. 
Uptown Greenville is the voice of the downtown. We exist to promote quality, cultural, residential, and economic development. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. It's alive. It's safe. It's awesome. It's a great place to work. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. Student at East Carolina University. Co-founder of eAudit.com. Sergeant with the Center City Unit. Owner of the Varsity Club. Our downtown has a name, and it's Uptown. I'm good like that. <laughs> yeah. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Hey, it's Riverboat Ron on a Pepsi can. You need a cool nickname like Riverboat Ron. I do? Yeah. The Lupner Eclipse. Oh, yeah. Fine, 59. Oh. I'm a cat. You know, like Kitty Cat. Those are terrible. The new Pepsi 18 pack featuring limited edition Carolina Panthers collector cans. Grab one for game day. Pepsi, official soft drink of the Panthers and all for the Carolinas. The Loop Nest Monster. Yeah. No. Bummer. All right, it's, it's uh, news time. 25 after 8 here on Talk of the Town on 103.7 WTIB and Cable 7. Let's go to the news desk now from WITN this morning. Billy Weaver. Good morning, Billy. Good morning, Henry. Currently 826, 54 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and this is a look at your WITN news headlines. A record turnout this midterm election in our state with more than 2.7 million people casting their ballots. Tom Tillis unseated incumbent Senator Kay Hagan. Tillis had 49% of the vote. Hagan with 47. But the money spent in this campaign is also made Making news. Reports show the Senate race topped $100 million, the most expensive Senate race in the nation. Here's a look at other races of interest in U.S. House District 1. Incumbent Democrat G.K. Butterfield beat Republican Arthur Rich. In District 3, incumbent Republican Walter Jones beat Democratic candidate Marshall Adame. There was no incumbent in House District 7 after the retirement of Mike McIntyre. Republican David Rouser won this seat. And in U.S. District 13, incumbent Republican George Holder beating his challenger. There were 10 sheriff's seats up for grabs this decision in 2014. In Beaufort County, incumbent Alan Jordan did not run for re-election. Republican Ernie Coleman secured 59% of the vote there to win over Democrat Al Whitney. A, a new sheriff was elected in Onslow County as Republican Hans Miller received 73% of the vote to win over Democratic challenger Scott Himes. There were more than 65 federal, state, and local races connected to eastern North Carolina. For all the results and much more, all you have to do is head to WITN.com and click on the election result banner at the top of your screen. We are also following breaking news this morning at WITN. Gunshots rang out before dawn in a local neighborhood, and police got there to find shell casings, but no one willing to talk. Lieutenant Curry with Greenville Police tells us officers got to Vance and Imperial Streets in West Greenville shortly after the shooting. Officers say they got several calls about gunfire in this area at around 3.45 a.m. this morning, but when officers arrived, all they found were shell casings, no one hurt, and no property damage. Also, no one willing to talk to police about what happened. Their investigation continues on this case this morning. And this just coming in to WITN's newsroom, a man serving time for helping commit an armed robbery has escaped a Greene County prison. Keith Acre with the North Carolina Department of Corrections confirms to WITN that 41-year-old Jeffrey Olds escaped the Greene County Correction Center. Officials would not confirm the exact time the escapee got out, but they said they are working to compile more details as they continue to search for him. Acre told or says Olds was scheduled to be released from prison in February of 2017 after a conviction for accessory after the fact of a robbery with a dangerous weapon. It is currently 8 28, 54 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and that's a look at your WITN news headlines. All right, Billy. thank you, Billy. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's check some weather now. Here with that is uh, Trent McGee. What you yeah, going to be good for today. Partly sunny skies with a high of 73 degrees. Cool tonight with lows around 55 to 58 degrees. Rain chance coming in for Thursday, mainly in the afternoon and into the evening, a 30 to 40 percent chance, a high of 75 degrees for your Wednesday. Sunshine back for Friday with a high of 61 
cool, though, for your Friday night. Uh, that big Rose Newburn game, take your jacket. 37 degrees for the low coming up Friday night. Uh, so uh, give us a little preview of what you got coming up on 94.3, the game tonight. Well, I'm going to have, uh, gonna have Brian Overton and Kyle Robinson, the, uh, the Aces for Autism event uh, coming to Greenville is coming up on November 15th, which Billy Weaver is going to participate in the Celebrity Tennis Tournament in. Uh, so they're going to be on to, to talk about that event. Eugene Robinson with where the Panthers go from here uh, and with what they're currently facing. To talk about, I was telling Billy, there's a big piece that E60 ran last night on Cam Newton. Um, Taught him about that. And then, of course, Josh Green with his pirate practice report coming up all tonight on 6 to 7 on 94.3 The Game. All right, news and weather uh, brought to you this hour by the Tire Real Estate Group, the Tire Realty Group and property management team here in uh, Greenville and Pitt County. Our friends over there at 758-H-O-M-E, they're the official real estate team of the ECU Pirates. Remember the guarantee, they'll purchase your home if they don't sell it by the deadline and price. And uh, you'll never held to a contract. You can fire them at any time and not be held to a six-month agreement. And, of course, their uh, website is guaranteed sell, S-E-L-L-N-C.com, guaranteed sell, N-C.com. And the phone number, 758-H-O-M-E, 758-HOME. Contact the Tire Realty Group. You hear about all the great success stories. They're all true. And uh, Homer and his guys are getting it done. And now property management as well. And they need homes uh, for a rental uh, for folks that want to rent homes too. So call them at 758-H-O-M-E. All right, let's take a break and come back. Tom Lampert is here. We're going to get a little analysis from him. He... I, He's so exuberant this morning, and he's uh, he got up and got over here early in the morning. It's amazing. Did you sleep at all last night? We'll get Tom's analysis. Also, uh, Mary Grace Bright is here. We're going to talk to Mary Grace in a minute, our friend from Grifton. they got a big event coming up over there this weekend, so stay with us. More Talk of the Town for Wednesday, November the 5th, coming up. Where were you? It was about 4.30. I'd come home early for our anniversary. Then the call came. It was the doctor with my results. The last thing I remember is hearing those three words, you're cancer free. All across Eastern North Carolina, Vident Health Cancer Care Specialists and Navigators offer a team approach to detecting, treating, and beating the disease. Call Vident Health for Cancer Care. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. A new era begins as East Carolina basketball enters its inaugural season in the American Athletic Conference. Join Pirate Nation as it faces the likes of Cincinnati, Memphis, and defending national champions UConn in Greenville. Women's season tickets start at $45 with men's as low as $107. Order your basketball season tickets today by calling 800-DIAL-ECU or online at ecupirates.com. Be undaunted in your support of Pirate Basketball. Hey, it's Riverboat Ron on a Pepsi can. You need a cool nickname like Riverboat Ron. I do? Yeah. The Lukner Eclipse. Oh, yeah. Fine, 59. Oh, oh, yeah. Kitty Cat. Huh? You know, like Kitty Cat. Those are terrible. Oh. The new Pepsi 18 pack featuring limited edition Carolina Panthers collector cans. Grab one for game day. Pepsi, official soft drink of the Panthers and all for the Carolinas. The Lukner's Monster. <laughs> no. Bummer. Uptown Greenville is the voice of the downtown. We exist to promote quality, cultural, residential, and economic development. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. It's alive. It's safe. It's awesome. A great place to work. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. Student at East Carolina University, co-founder of eaudit.com. Sergeant with the Center City Unit. Owner of the Varsity Club. Our downtown has a name, and it's Uptown. Nice. I'm good like that. <laughs> You ask a friend to recommend a doctor when you're sick. Why not rely on a friend to recommend a personal injury attorney when you've been seriously injured? At Hardy & Hardy, we treat our clients like family, which is why they often recommend us to their family and friends. If you or a loved one has been involved in an accident and are searching for an attorney, visit hardyandhardy.com 
to see what our clients have to say about us. Hardy and Hardy, protecting the rights of the seriously injured. All right, coming up this weekend in Grifton, it is um, the uh, John Lawson Legacy Days event, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute, coming up the 7th and 8th. It's also the weekend of the holiday show in the convention center here, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's right. Big Down weekend. East Holiday Show. 834, uh, 26 in front of 9. Uh, Tom Lamprey. Uh, the, Tom is so excited, he couldn't wait for 5 o'clock today when he has his own show. <laughs> He came in this morning. Yeah, Tom, thanks for being in pumped. last night helping with election coverage. No, it was uh, fun. Thanks. It's a huge night for the Republicans. Oh, my goodness. What do, you, what do you make of it? If 2010 was a shellacking, what was last night? I mean, the, the Democrats were pulverized. And, the, I mean, they'll end up picking up, I think, nine Senate seats. They picked up 20 seats in the House. They picked up seven governorships. I mean, it, it was a tremendous... Uh, throwing out of liberalism. You know, I actually said a couple of years ago that th this could be the last hurrah for liberalism. And, you know, in 2008, people said the Republican Party is dead. Conservatism is dead. And now I'm not going to say liberalism is dead because you say that and it'll come back to bite you uh, shortly. Uh, I do think it means that Republicans need to, to get in and uh, fulfill what they said they were going to do when they were running. Uh, you know, everybody was talking about, oh, I mean, liberals said you cannot uh, rescind Obamacare. It, it won't happen. I think if if uh, they take a vote, they've already done it in the House several times. And you know, it was interesting when they, when House Republicans voted to uh, rescind Obamacare, liberals laughed at them. They said, "Well, why were you doing that? It's never going to pass the Senate." Well, who's laughing now? Even though the Senate never but he'll took, but he'll veto it. Yeah, but at this point, will there be enough Democrats? that realize that they're going to lose next time if they yeah. don't come over to the Republican side and override the you veto. Know, the, I think that it, very well could happen. It's so sad, though, that that would be their motivation, but m perhaps it would be. that you know. How about let's do what's right for the country? I mean, that's the thing. Well, And, yeah. I, and, I, and, and to your point <laughs> about nice. whether liberalism is dead or not, I, you know, I think Republicans need to be humble and look at this as an opportunity to reach out to people that have not typically been – of like mind thinking in the past, that's kind of where I am this morning. I'm 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 looking at the Rand Paul uh, right. point of view, and saying, okay, Republicans are back in control, but you still got to win the presidency in two mm -hmm. years, and we don't know who the candidates are going to be yet. But right. you know, we think it's going to be Hillary, and who's it going to be for the Republicans? There, there's no clear cut choice for the Republicans. I think it right will now. be a governor, though. Uh, now, I, 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 I agree. Be, I, would, I agree. I we should be we should be welcoming, and we should be kind, and we should, but. We shouldn't capitulate. We, we need to, they need to stand uh, their ground on what got them elected. Yeah. And what got them elected is the XL pipeline, a secure border, and uh, uh, a, a sound military, <laughs> and getting rid of Obamacare. Yeah. Big article in the Post this morning about whether or not the Democratic Party needs to and will they rebrand itself. Yeah. And, and how tarnished it has been. Yeah, and before people start criticizing me for saying the Republicans need, I mean, I, look, I, I, I agree with you. Don't capitulate. But use this opportunity to bring new ideas to the party and new thinking to the party. I, I just think it's time for the Republican Party to reach out to people who have not typically been thinking that way and try to, you know, rather than argue with them, try to show them why. I agree. The, the point of the conservative point of view is a better way to go. I love Rand Paul's uh, uh, example of Detroit. I mean, we I think that's about, a great example. Yeah. And, and so. And, um, and look, not just Detroit, city after city after city where right. liberals have taken over the city council and the mayorship. Uh, th there's a lot of liberal cities that are hurting, and I agree, paint a picture. And one of the things that we, we still need is not only do we need someone with conservative principles, we had a caller that we talked about this yesterday on News and Views, but we need somebody that can communicate in a winsome and effective way to get beyond. Uh, we need another Ronald Reagan that can speak over the left-wing media and take yeah. the story right to the people, including uh, the African-American community. Who's your early favorite for, for the— for the president, I think it's going to be a governor. I actually think. Uh, so you don't think Rand Paul is going to be seriously um, a candidate? Oh, I think he'll, he'll seriously be considered. I, last night, I stayed up into the wee hours, and uh, Ted Cruz was on. I think he's going to run. 
But I, I do think it's going to be a governor. I actually think Chris Christie's stock is rising. I mean, there's some things that I disagree with Chris Christie on. I do think he's effective in terms of communicating. Uh, I, I also think the anger that he sometimes shows is what the American people feel. So I think a lot of folks can relate uh, to him. But Scott my, Walker's big win in Wisconsin is going to uh, it's going to elevate him. Uh, actually, in exit polling yesterday, the uh, the the guy that got the most comments of uh, who they'd like to see run, and this just wasn't uh, related exclusively to governors, but was uh, the uh, Texas governor uh, Rick Perry. Oh, he for actually, crying out loud. Yeah. No. Well, you know, his stock no. is rising. No. But, but no. that was what the exit poll no. said, Henry. He was such a buffoon in the last I'm election. just telling you, that's what the exit poll I, said. No, he just, no, let's don't go there. I'm let's just, don't go I'm there. just. Here's the thing. Here, you know, here, here's the thing. Why in the world would you take a Rick Perry and elevate him to that level again when you've got a Mitt Romney that, you know, is clearly uh, an intelligent, smart, articulate, great candidate? And uh, no, I'm still not I, so sure Mitt Romney lost in uh, in 2012, but I'm not going to go there. See, I, you know, I, I wonder. I wonder if this will motivate. You know, Romney is saying he won't run. I wonder if this will motivate him to rethink that thing. I don't know. I saw an interview with him over the weekend, and it, he sounded pretty firm that he was not. I going think to run. he'd be a great president. I just really do. And um, you know, well, I, I do think it'll be a governor. I, I really do. I do not think we're going to elect after the after the mess that uh, the current uh, former U.S. senator has made of the White House. I, I really do think, I, and I know people have said, even my wife has said, well, you know, some of these people I could I could get excited about that aren't governors, and, and some of them I could get excited about as well in terms of their philosophy, but I do think it's going to be a good uh, we got a guest waiting, so I, I can't, We and I, I'm looking forward to hearing your more comments from you this afternoon, but I do want to ask you this question. Pitt County, mm -hmm. once again, votes Democratic right. for, the, for, for the statewide race. Right. Uh, McCrory lost here to um, um, uh, Walter Dalton, right? I believe. That, am, am I right about that? It was it two thousand? No, it was two thousand eight. Uh, I think I think McCrory won here in two thousand twelve. Yeah, but I he think lost. You're right, yeah. But he lost to Beth Perdue here in two thousand eight. And Tillis loses by you know sixteen seventeen hundred votes here in Pitt County last night to uh, to to Kay Hagan. Right. Uh, yet Brian, Brian Brown Brian. wins by 60, 60 to forty. Yeah, so, I, so what's what is going on in Pitt County right now? I, that, that's a little bit of a head scratch. Oh, well, I think two things. One, every place that there's a state university like East Carolina University, you have a little island of liberalism yeah, that is going to point. vote to the left yeah. on statewide issues. I think Brian is is so effective. He gets out there and shakes hands, and it really uh, does say a lot about Brian Brown, doesn't it? It, it does. I, you know, a part of what I'm thinking on the uh, the Kay Hagan taking the county while Brian won was I think there were probably a lot of uh, uh, get out the votes to the African American community and uh, again some folks that would lean to the left over at the university. I think they probably went to the polls, and that's all they voted on. Yeah, they just voted for Kay Hagan and everything else. Uh, they just either. But if didn't you look, vote. you look at Eastern North Carolina. It was firmly Republican last night. Bill oh, yeah. Cook wins big in Man, Senate that District was a One. Huge win. Michael Speciale wins down in Craven County uh, again. Um, uh, the uh, well, the the Democrat did win up in Dare County. Paul Tyne won. But he, you know, that was that was going to be a tough race right. for Matty Lawson to win, I think. But but overall, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Eastern North Carolina, which used to be firmly Democratic, oh yeah, not anymore. Yeah, not, not anymore. anymore. All right, Tom. Look forward to you this afternoon. All right, look forward Tom to Tom and Sadie this afternoon uh, at five o'clock here on 103.7 and 94.1. All right, let's take a break. Come back and talk about John Lawson Legacy Days in Grifton next with uh, Mary Grace Bright, who's here with us. Be right back. Eastern North Carolina's truck headquarters is East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. It's a summer clearance event. Save up to $10,200 on the new Ram or lease it for just $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Hey, hey, it's Riverboat Ron on the Pepsi can. You need a cool nickname like Riverboat Ron. I do? Yeah. The Lukner Eclipse. Yeah. Yeah. Fine 59. Oh. Keekly Cat. You know, like kitty cat. Those are terrible. The new Pepsi 18 pack featuring limited edition Carolina Panthers collector cans. Grab one for game day. Pepsi, official soft drink of the Panthers and all for the Carolinas. The Luke Ness Monster! <laughs> no. Bummer. Unlock the best life has to offer for generations to come. 
Introducing the Legacy Membership exclusively at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. As a Legacy member, you'll not only enjoy all the benefits of an active, family-friendly lifestyle, your children and grandchildren will enjoy membership status as well. Belonging to Ironwood is remarkable. Sharing it with your entire family is even better. Become a Legacy member today, only at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. Golf at its finest, life at its fullest. You ask a friend to recommend a doctor when you're sick. Why not rely on a friend to recommend a personal injury attorney when you've been seriously injured? At Hardy & Hardy, we treat our clients like family, which is why they often recommend us to their family and friends. If you or a loved one has been involved in an accident and are searching for an attorney, visit hardyandhardy.com to see what our clients have to say about us. Hardy & Hardy, protecting the rights of the seriously injured. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Uptown Greenville is the voice of the downtown. We exist to promote quality, cultural, residential, and economic development. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. It's alive. It's safe. It's awesome. A great place to work. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. Student at East Carolina University, co-founder of eaudit.com. Sergeant with the Center City Unit. Owner of the Varsity Club. Our downtown has a name, and it's Uptown. Nice. I'm good like that. <laughs> The all new 2015 Chrysler 200 is here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. The Chrysler 200 is the mid-size game changer. Lease it for just $169 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. That's sad. All right, welcome back. Uh, oh, was that my mic on? <laughs> Oops. It, it is sad, but I won't tell you what it is sad, although Mary Grace Bright is here this morning. Good morning, Mary Grace. I'm not sad. How are you? You're not sad. I'm not sad. We're going to get away from uh, politics, although you've been a politician. You spent many years as chair of the school board here. I had. I did. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to ask you any questions about politics. Thank you. Are you happy? I voted for some winners, and I voted for some <laughs> losers. So. How you doing? I'm doing well. It's great Thank to see you. you. Thank you. Uh, you, of course, uh, you and your, your husband, Tim, who is the former uh, mayor of Grifton, very involved in the Grifton community, one of our favorite Pitt County neighborhoods. And you've got a big event coming up this weekend called John Lawson Legacy Days. Tell us about it. Well, John Lawson Legacy Days, this is our fourth year of doing an event. Uh, John Lawson was an explorer, a land surveyor who came up the Contentnia Creek uh, in 1711 with Baron von Grafenried out of Newburn, and the, they came and encountered the Tuscarora Indians, and the Tuscarora Indians thought von Grafenried was fine, and they let him go, but they didn't think so much of John Lawson, and so they uh, kept him and tortured him and ultimately murdered him in, um, wow. in Grifton. And about five years ago, a group of local citizens uh, took a day trip on the Contentnia Creek, uh, about 20 or 25 people to talk about history. They told some lies about things they'd done as young people <laughs> on the creek and some things that we don't need to repeat on TV. That probably weren't lies. Yeah, pro that weren't lies that we don't need to repeat. Uh, but after that, everybody decided, you know, this is really neat. It's a very unique piece of history to Grifton. Nobody else has this history. Uh, let's, let's do something so that we can bring some folks into Grifton, have fun, uh, educate some folks about history of this area, and... Here we so, go. So you've turned it into a little uh, history um, uh, festival, I guess. Of we sorts. have. We have. And, you know, from somebody who's not big on history, that sounds really dull and boring to me. <laughs> but it's not. It's, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of activities. Everything is free. 
Uh, we have some great speakers that come in and uh, talk about different aspects of the Tuscarora Nation and the Tuscarora Wars and the technology, the primitive technologies of that time. Uh, we're very excited this year. We have Vince Schiefert, who is a member of the Tuscarora Nation. When the Tuscarora Indians left North Carolina, they went to New York, and he is a descendant and is in New York. And so for him to come and speak to this group uh, it is a great honor for us to, to have him here. And then we've got some local speakers as well. Now, where is all this going to take place? I mean, I, we know it's in Grifton, but where in Grifton? It takes place on the grounds of the Grifton Museum, uh, which is down by the creek. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's a, a open space between the museum and the creek. Uh, the museum, if you've never been to it in Grifton, you should plan to go there. Uh, it's a great museum. It's not open every day. It'll be open all weekend. This weekend, it's open every other Sunday. Uh, but it, for a small town, it is a, a masterpiece. All right, and uh, the event starts uh, around 10 o'clock on, on Saturday morning? Well, we actually start sad, uh, excuse me, Friday night Okay. Uh, at 6 o'clock. We'll have, we have some reenactors, some colonial, revolutionary, and civil, uh, civil war reenactors who will be setting up camps on Friday night. They will do cannon firings, which, again, is great fun. Uh, it's a crowd favorite. Uh, it's not a neighborhood favorite, but it's a crowd favorite. <laughs> uh, but the that will be Friday night as a kickoff. And then Saturday we start uh, with the speakers about 9 o'clock. We also have boat rides on the Contentia Creek all day long. Um, so all that starts at 9. There's activities for all ages, kids, adults. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's supposed to be beautiful weather. I was just looking at the weather report. It's, it's supposed it is, to be. It's going to. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. It's going to be really gorgeous. Another great Eastern North Carolina weekend. All right, now is there any cost, and do you need tickets, or just show up? There is no, the only thing there's a cost for is if you do want to buy food on on the grounds. Um, you guys gonna have hamburgers and hot dogs, things like that. I'm not right now. That what we do something a little bit different. We do the butter beans and sausage for lunch on Saturday. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, wow. So we do that on Saturday, and then butter there's, beans and sausage. You can't beat that. No, you can't. And <laughs> there's uh, and there's some local restaurants in town if people want to go off ground to uh, to do that. All right. It's uh, Saturday in Grifton, the uh, John Lawson Legacy Days. Another opportunity to explore Pitt County a little bit and learn something you didn't know before. It's great fun. Yeah. Come join us. Anything else we need to cover? Is that pretty much covered? Well, I guess if I've got another minute, just yeah. to thank our uh, supporters sure. and our sponsors, Absolutely. Hardy and Hardy, uh, Grifton Born and Raised. Uh, yep. they the Hardy Boys. The Hardy Boys. They support yeah. us every year. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Daily Reflector. Uh, Sudden Link has stepped up this year. They've brought services into Grifton and sponsor us. First Citizens Bank. Uh, the town of Grifton, the Grifton Gang, uh, Sentinel Risk Advisors, who has a, a big office over here in Greenville. All of those folks have been sponsors, and we appreciate their help. All right, very good. Check it out. It's the uh, John Lawson Legacy Days coming up to Grifton this weekend. Good to see you, Mary Grace. Great. Thank you for coming in. It's good to see nice you. To Thanks, see Henry. You. Appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for all you and your family do. Your, your family has been very prominent and uh, public servants for a long time. You spent all those years as chairman of the school board, and you're father-in-law of course uh, dr ed bright was on the county commissioners and your husband was the uh, tim was the mayor of grifton for many years well thank you we, you we guys, enjoy serving you guys have been uh you guys have been uh punished enough and you've done your time <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> good to see you all right it's uh, eight minutes in front of nine o'clock uh, more talk of the town coming up in uh, just a few minutes stay with us we'll be right back with more here on wednesday morning november 5th October is Ram Truck Month here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Rams, $500 below invoice. That's a savings up to $11,000 or 0% for 72 months. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. A new era begins as East Carolina basketball enters its inaugural season in the American Athletic Conference. Join Pirate Nation as it faces the likes of Cincinnati, Memphis, and defending national champions UConn in Greenville. Women's season tickets start at $45 with men's as low as $107. Order your basketball season tickets today by calling 800-DIAL-ECU or online at ecupirates.com. Be undaunted in your support of Pirate Basketball. Where were you? It was about 4.30. I'd come home early for our anniversary. Then the call came. It was the doctor with my results. The last thing I remember is hearing those three words, you're cancer free. 
All across Eastern North Carolina, Vident Health Cancer Care Specialists and Navigators offer a team approach to detecting, treating, and beating the disease. Call Vident Health for Cancer Care. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Hey, it's Riverboat Ron on a Pepsi can. You need a cool nickname like Riverboat Ron. I do? Yeah. The Lutner Eclipse. Oh, yeah. Fine, 59. Oh. Kitty Cat. Huh? You know, like Kitty Cat. Those are terrible. Oh. The new Pepsi 18 pack featuring limited edition Carolina Panthers collector cans. Grab one for game day. Pepsi, official soft drink of the Panthers and all for the Carolinas. The Lutner's Monster. Yeah. No. Bummer. Unlock the best life has to offer for generations to come. Introducing the Legacy Membership exclusively at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. As a Legacy member, you'll not only enjoy all the benefits of an active, family-friendly lifestyle, your children and grandchildren will enjoy membership status as well. Belonging to Ironwood is remarkable. Sharing it with your entire family is even better. Become a Legacy member today, only at Ironwood Golf and Country Club. Golf at its finest, life at its fullest. It's the Jeep Celebration event here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Lease a new Cherokee for $1.99 a month or a Grand Cherokee for $2.99 a month. And we've got more Wranglers than anyone here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Little Eddie Money. Michael, very exciting. Michael got to meet Eddie Money last week. Five minutes in front of nine uh, here on Blue the day Oyster after Cult. the election. That's Blue Oyster Cult? Yes. Burning for you. Oh, that's a good song. That is a good song. Good. Keep that under me while I read this, Coach. Oh, it's, it fades out. Can't do it. Uh, it's a lot going on, and uh, this weekend is the uh, big uh, Down East Holiday Show. And if you've been uh, hearing about the 350 degrees cheese straws, we actually had some open here in the studio last night during election coverage, and Lamprecht and I were, uh, were snacking on them. <laughs> all night they're very very hard to put down uh one bite and you're hooked and this is the weekend you'll be able to buy them here in town at the uh, down east holiday show on the 7th 8th and 9th and uh, 350 degree cheese straws will be there and uh you know we've been talking about these things for the last couple of years they are the bomb diggity they're made in beaufort from an old family recipe got just the right amount of crunch just the right amount of spice. It got, it's got a little kick to it, which I really enjoy. And they're the best cheese straws you're ever going to taste. Uh, check them out this weekend, 7th, 8th, and 9th at the Down East Holiday Show at the Greenville Convention Center. 350-degree cheese straws made right here in eastern North Carolina. Great for corporate giving. Go prepared to buy a bunch of them and take them home for holiday giving. They're worth it. Uh, 8.56 now. Uh, we've gone all through the show this morning with all this politics, and we've been blowing McGee off, and now it's time for McGee on sports. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, McGee, because <laughs> yeah, there's so we, much sports to cover. Here's, here's McGee on sports. All right, and the uh, second edition of the college football playoff rankings were released Tuesday night. Mississippi State, Florida State, Auburn, and Oregon, the top four teams in this week's college football playoff rankings. Duke moved up one to number 22, and Georgia Tech crept in at number 24. Eight no Marshall still did not get in for a second consecutive week. Uh, so, who, so, who, so who then is the favorite to get the uh, at-large bid? That's a good question. They didn't, they didn't rank it that way? Mm -mm. No. Interesting. And I, I, I tell you what, I think if Marshall keeps winning, I think by one of the last couple of rankings, they'll end up getting it. I don't think so. Really? I, I, do, I do not think you can give it to Marshall. I, th I think East Carolina would still I don't think they want to give it to Marshall. Our, uh, you know, and, and depending Co on Colorado, what Colorado State six and one. Yeah, and, and depending on what happens with ECU moving forward, obviously. I think it's Colorado State right now. You got to give it. To I them. think they're the favorite now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, ECU can still win the American yeah. Conference. Yeah. 
Uh, Carolina Panthers defensive end Greg Hardy's uh, jury trial uh, in his domestic violence case postponed from November 17th until early 2015. Not good news to him because this means that he will not uh, play, likely not play in 2014, and that multiple sources are saying his career with the Panthers likely over. And the Duke men's basketball team open exhibition play Tuesday night with a 115-58 pounding of Livingston uh, and uh, freshman leading the way for Duke. They had seven players scoring in double figures. Is that it? That's it. All right, our uh, sports update this hour brought to you by our friends at Suddenlink. And we've been talking about this little flap that Suddenlink finds itself in with uh, the folks from Viacom. And I got to tell you that uh, I, uh, it, it's frustrating to read some of the things and hear some of the things that the folks from uh, the, the Viacom folks from New York are saying about our friends at Suddenlink. Uh, folks, I'm just going to tell you, Suddenlink is local. They are uh, our neighbors. Uh, Jared Sonny, the uh, general manager over there, does a heck of a job. Of course, uh, before him, Phil Oshlager was very involved in the community. 226 employees in the area. Economic impact of $1.3 million in state and local taxes. And uh, with 226 uh, employees and uh, 21,000 almost residential customers and 1,900 business customers, you talk about an impact on the community. That's suddenly. If you've not switched to Suddenlink yet, I highly encourage you to do so. Make a statement. Support your neighbors here in eastern North Carolina. Don't listen to that stuff coming out of New York because uh, they wanted to charge you more and Suddenlink said no. Switch over to Suddenlink at 866-432-1184. All right, that's it for today. McGee tonight at 6 on 94.3 The Game. Yep. See you tomorrow.